This number one will be the introduction series for people who are trying to get into trucking and uh, wanted to create this specifically to help out those who have those common questions. I'm people who reached out to me consistently have these questions where they're buying a few trucks or they're getting put into a situation where they receive trucks and uh, they want to be successful and there are a lot of barriers to entry. Um, as one guy put it, it's three times as likely to fail in comparison to a, a different company. So I want to, it's all about giving you guys the value that we, po as much value as we possibly can so that you can be successful. I'm Andrew. I'm the owner of AJG Transport. I'm the president of GH Logistics. I am I've been in the game for about 10 years now, and my main focus is to provide value. Number one, you're thinking about starting up your own trucking company. You're thinking about starting your logistics firm, and um, you want to go buy your first truck. If you're looking for another perspective to help you be successful in trucking, keep watching. I'm going to give you some five critical tips that I think will help you align yourself and, and things that you need to have thought about. And if you haven't thought about them, you need to do more research before executing on any type of business plan that involves trucks. My first tip is going to go straight into the truck itself, right? If you've been driving for a while, some of you have been driving 1990 Peterbilts, some of you have been driving 2024 brand new trucks right from the get-go with the mega carrier, or maybe you've never driven at all, even, even more shaky. I want to provide a, some clarity in regards to preventing you from buying a lemon. And boy, are there lemons in the trucking industry, in trucks. It's just trucks are made to drive. Drivers end up being negligent with these trucks. There are some things that the, train, the, the untrained eye will not see. And you'll end up paying for it in the near future or afar. And so a couple of things regarding buying your first units is, one, I, I, if you're not well-versed and you can't trust yourself to do a full 60-point inspection, I would... Uh, buy a inspection guaranteed. I'm going to uh, want to purchase this truck. I get all the paperwork going. As I'm getting it going, ask these guys, can I do a uh, inspection with my own third-party servicer? And uh, most of the guys will tell you yes. The guys will tell you no, stay away from them. Don't touch them with a 60-foot pole. Whenever you're doing that inspection, your main goal is to not only find out if it runs and find out if you're going to have problems, but you're going to find a guy who can get his hands on the engine, you know, if you got a Cummins or if you got a Detroit, or if you got a Caterpillar, what have you, um, get somebody who's already had experience with those engines. As you already found, if you found somebody and they're giving you that report, uh, make sure that they're checking everything top to bottom. You'll see the most common situations are going to be their DPF issues uh, or SCR issues. Those are basically the, the emission system. The emission system is going to give you uh, a big problem when it comes to used units. It really just depends on what kind of truck you're buying and what year it is. If it, I, I always prefer brand new, but who doesn't? As long as you find the right truck that you know can run hundreds of thousands of miles if taken care of well. You win and lose on the purchase of your truck. And I guarantee you expect problems. Why? Because tr trucking companies, including myself, I will not sell you the truck that can last me 1.2 million miles. I will sell you the truck that I hate to drive, that I hate to have my drivers in or that I've had common problems at, even if it's at a loss, simply because those are the trucks that you just can't fix. One thing's going to go wrong. It's probably you fix, you fix the, the alternator. All of a sudden the AC compressor is going to give you an issue. You fix you so, so on and so forth. It's going to be a headache. And that happens more commonly than you would think. Tip number two, don't estimate, don't underestimate the repair costs. A tire can ruin your entire profit for a week. A tire can make sure that uh, can be the difference between you celebrating and you trying to take another payday loan out. You need to have a plan regarding your estimation of repair costs. And if you're just going to wait until you have the money to buy a truck, I implore you to keep in mind if you have a free hoard of cash, uh, of course, most people don't, but I will say make sure that you have this additional line that you can pull from in order to pull repairs and then of course pay them over time simply if you were you know a, a one-man show who's trying to support his family uh, i would advise that i would i would focus on the issues the guys who are the most successful are always thinking about the worst case scenario and so in the repairs uh, along with the purchase you have to think about one your warranties, you have to be an expert at your warranty and see what you can do to buy an extended warranty, especially if it's a used unit. 
I cannot tell you how many trucks it has saved me uh, or how many engines. I've replaced three engines specifically just off of warranty for free uh, in my tenure. And it's something that I guarantee you it'll save your life. Develop around 5 to 7% of your overall profit going straight over to a repair fund. And also thinking about your truck as your investment no matter what, especially a used one, albeit you need to start working on preventative maintenance every 20,000 miles instead of 40. Why? Because you're going to expect problems. And if you see you have another guy who has eyes, professional eyes on your truck, more often than not, he's going to find the leak before it becomes, you know, you having to drop your, your entire oil pan because you got to change the entire gasket. No matter what, you're going to have the thousand dollar problems guaranteed. You, the longer you're in this business, the more you're going to have. And the more trucks you have, Lord forbid, the more hair you're going to lose. Number three is no more than the drivers. Uh, if you're driving yourself, you know that you've been in the driver's seat. You understand what it feels like to be out there for weeks or months at a time, or if they're working for, um, you know, a, a daily uh, position or every other day position, you understand the tricks of the trade and what drivers can get away with and what they will try not to get away with. You understand that these drivers are thinking for 11 hours straight and they're going to be in tunnel visioned. You know, you got to have an analytical expertise over your drivers. If you're, if you're going to be a dispatch, a dispatch, for example, I had a nurse come up to me saying that she wanted to buy a couple of trucks. Um, she had some money saved. She's done some dispatch in the past. She wants to give it a shot. The biggest question is how much do you know regarding the drivers, regarding inspections, regarding what drivers should know? So whenever you are thinking about having issues, or, or, or excuse me, so whenever you are expecting issues, which you will consistently, throughout a, 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 you know, any type of supply chain, you have to be ready with the answers. And so people who are unaware of that and are just kind of as clueless as the driver, I guarantee you, you'll lose drivers quickly. You'll have higher driver turnover. You'll have more problems with trucks because you have less care. So the guys who are putting the investment in their drivers, the investment in the knowledge, pre-trip exams, those driver, those business owners are the people who have invested drivers that last for years and years and years, make their money, the drivers make their money, and then you can make your profit. And they're the ones that are telling you, hey, there's a small gash on the steer tire. You should probably change it before there's a blowout. Because when you have a blowout in the middle of the road, I guarantee you're paying thousands of dollars, including a possible tow bill for you to get, to get it taken care of. And then all of a sudden you're behind a month. You got 12 payments no matter what. These drivers are going to help you or they will hurt you. Number four is don't underestimate the compliance in the paperwork. I can't tell you how much money that I've saved over the years simply because I researched and knew what I was talking about with an insurance company, with a compliance firm, with the DOT directly. I will say that everyone is out to get you. You have to understand that in trucking. That is the um, end all be all. You are the person who's making the money. You are the person that all third party service members, middle class people will come and reach out to because they want a piece of the pie. The more that your firm knows how to do, the better. You need to have more research and, and focus in your compliance. And in order to do that, you need to partner up with JJ Keller. JJ Keller gives you a great, a great textbook uh, for free regarding all the DOT regulations. You need to partner up with your, your local compliance firms. You can have one, sure, but don't let them do everything because as a business owner, you need to be well-versed. You have to have that uh, capability and you have to have somebody helping you raise alarms in your trucking firm as you're growing from one to five trucks or your MC is going to be crushed with problems, stops at the scale, issues, tickets. You want to avoid all that stuff because if you're going to plan on growing, if you have a great compliance and safety system and you're able to continuously make money, you're going to be here for a long time. So don't overlook that. And then, of course, understand how to file your IFTA. Understand how to, if you're interstate, understand how to, um, understand how to go about tolls and pre-pass disputes. Understand how to do all these things. Uh, and, and we'll go through compliance as well with one of my compliance officers in the future. But this will allow you to, to be more successful and spend less money on, on someone else because you're creating more value for yourself. Number five is the end all be all regarding whether or not you're going to have a great successful trucking company. There are some, a few that have some opportunity to, to bring in a, a truck or a couple of trucks based on family who gives it to them, something like that. I've seen that in the past and this is not really for you because you're kind of stuck with that. 
but I'm talking about the guys who have a have bought trucks and they're trying to look for an opportunity and now they're stuck because the spot market's not paying and TQL will not give you another 50 bucks. You need to have the opportunity before you commit to buying said trucks. If you come in and you're already seeing some other dispatchers make a crazy amount of money and you're you're trying to understand how search up their customers, understand what kind, what makes a great niche trucking company. You know, make sure that you have agreements with these dispatchers. Understand if you have agreements with some brokers, because then if not, you're going to have truck sitting and truck sitting is death. Guaranteed. You have to have wheels turning. And so if you have the opportunity first, great. I commend you and I hope that you're successful. But if not, that is where I would start first. That's the one thing I wish I did more often. At the beginning, I started with Amazon. I saw that there was a great opportunity. I saw that nobody was up at 1 a.m. in 2015. And I started my company. I bought my first two trucks, hired those drivers, and they took off. And we were getting paid five bucks a mile. It was great money. But at the same time, every single penny went straight to a different truck. And then, of course, I learned along the way. But bottom line is, I saw that opportunity, and it made me want to um, pass or fail myself. I said, I'm going to go and commit 100%. And that meant day, night weekends, holidays, you name it, that was what I was doing. And so if you find that opportunity, grab hold of it. And if you're going to have the type of sentiment to be successful, it's going to be a long journey of men a mental marathon of problems. That's what the trucking company, that's what a trucking company is. But if you do get through that, I commend you. And I know that you'll be successful. So if you want to know more about this in the future, feel free to uh, subscribe, follow up to, um, follow up with AJG Transport, GH Logistics on my channels. And we're hoping to bring more value, create a community where we can have a thought-provoking environment for teammates inside the logistics industry. Uh, not more, not as much for servicemen, but for the guys who are, who are managing trucks, the owners. Those guys don't have as much um, to resources to pull from. A lot of guys I've met, I'm grouping up with them. They're younger. They're 26, 27, one, two, three trucks, and they're trying to figure stuff out, and it seems like everyone's out to get them. Well, bottom line is I understand that. I have been successful in that environment, and the bottom line is you have to be a shark, and I'm trying to show people that that is possible, to take control of your future, understand and comprehend that this world is out to get you, and still commit to success. So appreciate the time, guys, and best of luck.